Leviticus 26 and 27. Again, congratulations on finishing a difficult book. This is our last video in Leviticus, so I hope it has been uh, enjoyable, even though it's very hard literature in some ways. The, the, this chapter, this section, these last two chapters are very different. If you uh, are listening to the words and the vocabulary of 26 specifically, you'll notice that there's no mention of words that have been talked about a lot before, like sacrifice, never mentioned, offering, uh, atonement, never mentioned, um, holiness and all of its derivations like sanctification or sanctify, never mentioned. So anyone reading 26 would get the sense that it's almost like a reset button. We're clarifying, we're settling in, as it were, to conclude the book. And in that sense, that's why I set it apart as our last video. Well, these, uh, this is a, a summary. These phrases are a summary of chapter 26, verses 3 and 14. And I write them out because this is going to be a very common way of talking in the Torah, in the law. Things like this, and this is God talking through Moses to the people of Israel in summary fashion. Walk in my commandments or my judgments or my statutes, a combination of this kind of language. Obey my judgments, keep my commandments, observe my statutes. Many ways in which to do it right and of course what they're supposed to follow. Well, what do we do with that kind of language? And again, it's going to be very common. Let me use this video to talk about a, a, a common, I think, misconception when it comes to how God wants Israel to handle his laws. You probably heard somewhere along the way, maybe just Sunday school, that God expects moral perfection, that that's his standard, and that we need to live up to that perfection or uh, results follow, right? I think that's a bad rumor, and, 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 and I say that because of having worked through this over my life and looking at it, uh, and I believe I'm doing it carefully, I just don't see that. And here's why. Uh, several things even in our text. Um, if you read between, uh, number one, if you read between verses 3 and 14, so 26, 4 through 13, take a look at it again, everything that God says after he says, walk, obey, keep my commandments, he presumes they can do it. And so it would be a very cruel parent, right, who would say to their child, do this, and then stands back and knows they can't. Uh, it seems from everything the text is giving us uh, that God expected his people to do these things. Uh, secondly, notice that again the words like sacrifice and atonement uh, are gone from the text. It would be very easy for God to say, well you can't do it, so therefore sacrifice instead. That language is never part of the discussion of the Old Testament. So this idea that God will substitute a sacrifice for our imperfection or our moral failings is not true. And again, sometimes it's been implied in the way we handle these kinds of texts. Thirdly, I think the, the emphasis, and again, we'll have to hang on to this idea through much of the rest of the biblical story, it's uh, which or who they're, uh, they're obeying. The emphasis is not on commandments, judgments, and statutes, it's on whose commandments we're talking about. Because again, remember the context that Israel received the, the law in, that they're around other nations who worship their gods by worshiping or by following their commandments, other God's commandments. So really what the text is saying is, who are you honoring, not how well are you honoring? And if we make that little switch, it just changes again the whole uh, tenor of what God is expecting. And fourth, one more thing, and we can see this in 26 verses 21 through 41, seven times the word, and it's only used in Leviticus, hostility and it comes across sometimes as contrary. You might see the word contrary in your, in your verses here, but the idea that the opposite of this is not imperfection. It's not someone who's trying and failing. The opposite is hostility toward God. It's literally being uh, rebellious toward Yahweh. Another word that's in 26 verse 40 is the word, and we'll deal with this later, the word unfaithfulness, ma'al, M-A-A-L in Hebrew. 
It's a very dangerous word, and that is what's described here as the opposite of keeping commandments. So let's get that idea, that rumor, I think a terrible rumor, out of our minds that God expects moral perfection. It's never stated in the story of Israel. It's never expected uh, by the people of Israel. Remember what uh, David and others will do in the Psalms. They will celebrate the idea that, one, we have law. They love God's law. And you wouldn't celebrate law if you knew you couldn't do it. And secondly, God himself, and we've seen this in Exodus 34, when given the opportunity, he tells us how kind and forgiving and gracious and mercy, uh, uh, merciful he is. Those are all concepts that do not bespeak a God that demands perfection. They tell us of a God who knows what we're like, but who tells us with all his heart, be careful who you love. Thank you.